right, we're giving you guys a bonus today. Here's the bonus. Doing two examples for the price of one. Both of these are going to be solving for x and y, solving for variables, using the properties of equilateral and isosceles triangles. So let's go. Right off the bat, we notice that we have two triangles here. For reference purposes, I'm going to label them one and two. Triangles one and two are both isosceles. And so what we know about them is that our base angles are going to be congruent. I'll go ahead and mark them. If the base angle of triangle two is equal to x, then the other base angle must also be equal to x. In triangle one, we have the same situation, so both base angles are equal to y. How does this help us? Well, let's look. If we know that we have 50 degrees in the vertex angle of triangle two, then that means that 180 minus 50 leaves us with 130 degrees. Well, if we have 130 degrees left, we know that 2x is equal to 130 degrees. And so we divide that by 2 because we have two base angles. So x is going to be equal to 65 degrees, not 650. 65 degrees. 65 degrees. And so if x is equal to 65 degrees, I can go ahead and cross this out and write 65. And I will erase. I guess I can erase my sloppy 5 also. And we've got 65 degrees here and 65 there. Much nicer. Now, here's the problem. We don't necessarily know what any of the angles in triangle 1 are except we know that the two base angles y and y are equivalent. So what can we do? If we look down here at the very bottom, we have a linear pair. Half of it is 65. So that means 180 minus 65 is going to give us 115 degrees. Well, that 115 degrees goes here. And so now we know the vertex angle of angle 1. Well, the vertex angle of angle 1 is only part of the puzzle because the two base angles make up the remainder of the sum of the angles, which I know is 180. Well, then that means that 2y, or my two base angles, together are 65 degrees because the 115 and the 65 give me 180. So if I divide by 2 and I divide by 2, I get y is equal to... 32.5 degrees. In the next example, a little bit more difficult, dealing with three triangles here. Once again, for reference purposes, I'm going to go ahead and label the three triangles. Right off the bat, I see that I have two isosceles triangles and one equilateral triangle. Well, we know that an equilateral triangle, sorry, it's an equiangular triangle, meaning it's 60 degrees but we know that it's also equal, equilateral, and so each of these is 60 degrees. In addition to that, I know here I have 50 degrees, and since triangle one is isosceles, both base angles must be the same. So my strategy here was to label all of the parts that I could before I start. So now, if I have all these angle measures filled in, it's going to be fairly easy to find x and y because I'm just finding angles that are missing. Let's look first at triangle one. We're going a little bit backwards. We're going to solve for y first. Well, in triangle one, we have 180 degrees minus 100 for the two base angles is equal to 80 degrees. That's y. y is equal to 80 degrees because it's what, what's left over when I subtract 100. Now, if y is 80 degrees, it's adjacent to x. So if we knew the total of that angle, we could find x. But we don't, unfortunately. So we're going to have to look to something else. Down here, we're on a line. So we know 180 degrees is our target. Well, if I've got 50 and 60 already knocked out of the way, I know that what has to be left is 70 degrees. Well, if that's 70 degrees, and I know that triangle 2 is an isosceles triangle, this must be 70 also. 
Well, if I have two angles of that triangle, so 140 degrees, if I subtract 180 from 180, that 140, I find that x is equal to 40. So it all makes sense. Base angles are congruent. All three angles are congruent. Base angles are congruent. Vertex angle add up to, adds up to 180 with the rest of it.